Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin and welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today we're going to discuss the case of Bell Atlantic Corp v. Twombly. This case was in the Supreme Court of the United States in the year 2007. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. So Twombly is the plaintiff in this instance, and Bell Atlantic Corp is the defendant. Bell Atlantic Corp was a large telecommunications company. It's actually a subsidiary of Verizon. It's owned by Verizon. So just think of Verizon in your mind, uh, an internet and a telephone service provider. Uh, what Twombly is alleging is that Bell Atlantic um, had engaged in anti-competitive behaviors um, that were illegal underneath Section 1 of the Sherman Act. Now, these anti-competitive behaviors that they alleged Bell Atlantic uh, Corp. had uh, engaged in essentially was to say Bell Atlantic, you know, was a large telecommunications corporation. And they would say, um, Bell Atlantic, you get this region, and then the other large telecommunications uh, corporation, you get this region. And we're not going to compete with one another, right? So Corporation A that is large and Corporation B that is large, they just both have their own turf. They don't engage with one another. There's no competition. For that reason, prices aren't driven down. So smaller businesses, you know, can't really compete with the prices because there's no competition between larger telecommunications corporations. So Twombly is alleging that there was basically a conspiratorial agreement between these two parties um, that said we're not going to uh, we're not going to sell internet on your turf if you won't sell internet on our turf. Um, so they file a complaint in the Southern District of New York, and the judge there dismisses the complaint. Well, they say, why'd you dismiss our complaint? We're going to appeal this. So they they take it to the federal appellate court. Um, and the federal appellate court, court rules in favor of Twombly and says, you know, this lawsuit, though we're not going to say Twombly should win the whole thing, we're going to say it should continue into the discovery phase of the lawsuit. Now, discovery is where two parties engage with one another and basically can ask for any information from the other party that they would find pertinent to the lawsuit. Um, so Bell Atlantic doesn't like that, right? Because now if Twombly can ask Bell Atlantic for any information they might need for the lawsuit, well, then maybe Twombly will find something, um, some type of you know hidden agreement, some type of conspiratorial anti-competitive uh, agreement. So Bell Atlantic appeals this, and the Supreme Court grants cert, um, and the Supreme Court uh, goes ahead and considers this case. Uh, the Supreme Court rules um, that the motion to dismiss that was granted by the district court judge in the Southern District of New York was valid. Um, and the appellate court's decision uh, is reversed, um, and so the suit ends there. So some reasoning behind the Supreme Court's decision, the majority was a 7-2 decision. Um, the majority rests its, uh, its reasoning on Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 12b-6, uh, which basically is an affirmative defense to a lawsuit's movement into discovery. And if you say that there is a failure of one party to state a claim, upon which relief can be granted, that's Rule 12b-6, um, then that lawsuit won't continue. So what the court says is this Rule 12b-6 here, um, there was no claim by Twombly that was plausible enough to allow a lawsuit to continue. You know, the mere appearance of anti-competitive conspiratorial behavior is not enough for the court to say, no, that's plausible enough, now let's continue into the discovery phase um, and let Twombly get access to all of Bell Atlantic's documents and agreements with other telecommunications providers. So the court says that 12b-6 essentially bars this suit from continuing because the claim of Twombly wasn't plausible enough. There weren't enough facts that Twombly alleged in the complaint to allow the suit to move forward. So um, the dissent, uh, which was, uh, it was a 7-2 dissent. Uh, there was, so there's two ju justices that dissented. They said that you know, this, this interpretation of 12b-6, basically inferring the word plausible into the federal uh, rules of civil procedure, because the word plausible isn't there. It really just says failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. There's nothing about plausible. There's nothing uh, about this. So the dissent says, you know, we're basically expanding this rule. And when we expand this rule, we're going to stop a lot of lawsuits from ever getting to discovery phase. Now, the discovery phase is important in a civil suit because it allows the parties to actually figure out what's going on. And if lawsuits don't get to this discovery phase, um, then lawsuits aren't going to be nearly as viable, right? People aren't going to want to bring as many lawsuits because it's harder to get to the discovery phase. So that's the decision. Some implications, um, ex ante, so looking forward from this type of a ruling, is it's going to make um, it much more difficult to bring a lawsuit in, in a federal court. The reason for that being is that Rule 12b-6 um, basically has now been expanded to mean you have to have 
facts that are plausible enough to state a claim. Now that means there's kind of an evidentiary aspect introduced into your complaint. You have to have enough facts that are, you know, that the court will see, well, it's plausible. So then we're going to allow you to get to the discovery phase. So prior to this, I mean, it would have been a lot easier to be a plaintiff's attorney because it just says you have to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. Now, if you state any legal claim that, um, that relief is a remedy, that where there is a legal remedy, um, then the court would allow you to get to a discovery phase. Now that discovery phase would um, essentially allow you to get access to all of the other party's documents, um, conversations, emails, uh, company-wide memos, um, agreements. And at that point, you could begin to look into it and build your case from that point forward. So this makes it much more difficult to get your, your case to the discovery phase. And for that reason, there's going to be less lawsuits um, filed uh, um, you know, from the plaintiff's side because you just don't know if you're ever going to be able uh, to get to that discovery phase because you have to have enough plausible facts, right? You can't just file the suit and then get your plausible facts um, after you file the suit from the discovery phase. So the good side to that is that, you know, there's going to be less frivolous lawsuits. Um, the lawsuits that are brought forward in federal court are going to certainly be more solid from this point on uh, because you're going to not have a bunch of attorneys that want to, you know, file lawsuits that they know are just going to uh, get dismissed immediately by the other party. Now, the downside of that is there's going to be less justice that's done. There's going to be less of these lawsuits that are brought forward. You know, it's very possible that Bell Atlantic Corp did engage in some anti-competitive behavior here, but we'll never know because we didn't get to the discovery phase um, of the lawsuit uh, because, you know, the court said the motion to dismiss was valid. And, um, you know, it, it also is a little bit interesting just from the uh, the interpretation of the rules of uh, of civil, civil procedure here is that the court did read another word into it where it probably ought not to have. It doesn't say plausible um, in the uh, in the rule itself. So just a little bit interesting to think about. Definitely makes being a plaintiff attorney less attractive and makes a defense attorney position a little bit more attractive um, uh, and might push more lawsuits from the federal courts to the state courts where they might not follow this rule um, as it was laid out in Twombly. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye.